Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast, Mountain Buck Q&A edition brought to you by Timber Ninja Outdoors. So the way these podcasts work is this is in addition to the normal weekly episode where I usually bring a guest on and to talk stories, strategies, a whole bunch of different stuff. Well, this episode is focused on your questions that I've compiled, some of them from previous years where a lot of people have asked the same questions. Some of them have been recent ones that have been sent in. And I just want to go through and kind of talk about these things in a short 10 to 20 minute podcast to be able to go through and just go through it. I did say at the beginning that I would not be doing this in the video podcast version. Well, some things have changed and I realized I sounded lazy when I said that. And now uh, this will be available on YouTube as well. So Let's just jump right into this this episode here. If uh, if you have some questions that you want to submit and you want answered on this Mountain Buck Q and A, then you can send it to my email bodiesmeetswesthunt.com and just make sure that you put in there that this is for the Mountain Buck Q and A in the subject line, just so I know what it is and I can categorize it and go through and pick these questions out. Another way of being able to Another way of being able to put questions in is just to be able to go on the YouTube video where you see this and leave a question in the comments. That's another way of being able to enter it. All right. So this one on this week, I have two different questions that were asked. So two different questions that kind of tie in together. So the first one is when you should walk into your tree stand in the morning. And the second one is what type of light should you use when you're going into your stand in the morning or coming out at night? So we'll start with the first one about when you should be walking into your tree stand, what type of light light you should use. So I break this down into what, what time of year is it? And this is how I look at when I'm entering and exiting my stand. In the early and late season, I tend to go in about an hour and a half to two hours before it breaks daylight because the reason for that is if I'm going in right just before it gets light going in there, I I feel like the deer are more alert in that kind of period right before it starts to get light. They're getting scared. They're kind of getting back to bed. They don't want to be out and about. Whereas when I went in the pitch dark that, you know, an hour and a half to two hours before I've walked right past deer and they don't even really care that I'm there. It's like that we're all just hanging out together. And that's, that's kind of my experience with it and why I like to get in there a little bit early, unless I don't think I can beat that deer back to bed. Like if I'm hunting a specific area where I think a buck is bedding and I don't have reason to believe that I can get there early enough that maybe he's bedding down well before daylight or he's mingling around right there, feeding really close to where he's bedding. Then I actually might wait until daylight and after I know he's bedded and try to slip in as close as I can, hoping that he's going to get up and mill around and feed and do some different stuff during the day and make a play that way. So that's how I look at early and late season. Now the rut, that's a a little bit different for, for me. I don't believe that matters as much, especially if you're in a cruising area. So if you're in like a uh, a pinch point, say the top of a draw, or you're in a saddle or somewhere that, or even a crick bottom where deer are going to be cruising, looking for does, checking bedding areas versus, you know, where they're actually bedding at. I, I don't think it really matters to, to get in early. I've personally never shot a buck first thing in the morning during the rut in one of those types of areas. So as the rut gets grueling and you say you have a week off of work or maybe you have two weeks off of work and you're, you're hunting day after day after day, dark to dark, it can be really rough on your body. And this was that was something I learned from my dad years ago was, why don't you sleep in a little bit? Maybe hunt your way in at light. Maybe wait until eight in the morning and, and head in. And if you're tired, obviously, the more, more time you spent in the tree, the the more chances you have 
But I also believe in making those sits worthwhile and making sure that you're present during that hunt and that you're able to be there and be focused during that time period. So sometimes during the rut, I, I fool around with some different times going in and I uh, don't worry about being there so early as, uh, as I do in the early and the, the late seasons. So, and another tactic for that to, to be able to do and use your time a little bit more is leave the truck right as it's break, breaking daylight and still hunt your way into your tree. So I just mean hunting slowly, maybe grunting, maybe calling, doing some stuff as you're going in and kind of sneak your way in. And it may take you a couple hours to what normally would take you a 30 minute walk, but it makes you be able to still be in the game as you're doing that. So just a quick story. Uh, I think it was 2011. I was hunting this stand uh, that I had set up in a creek bottom. And it was a good little over a mile hike down into it. Walked this gated road down in. It kind of split off and would go down into this bottom. And I remember I was hunting it. And, uh, at that point I was just, I hated all day sits. I absolutely hate them. And I'm not saying I love them now. I've just kind of learned to be able to manage it. But at that time I kept climbing down about 11 in the morning and going back to the truck, eating lunch, just kind of, I don't know, just finding a way to break up the day. And I remember my dad telling me, you need to sit there longer. You need to sit there longer. You know, that you're, you're hunting a cruising spot there. Like there's going to be more midday movement. And I was like, yeah, okay. And, uh, of course 11 AM here I go climbing down the stand and I'm halfway down the sticks and here comes a buck and he comes in and, uh, <laughs> the buck, yeah, the buck was coming in. I was able to get to the ground while he was coming in. He's making a scrape. I grabbed my bow. I was so shaken by the whole experience. I went to put my arrow on. He came by at like 15 yards. I went to draw back. And at that time, I had a rest on that didn't really capture my arrow well. So I'd put my finger over top of the arrow. And apparently, I was squeezing harder than I thought because I pulled the knock right out of the arrow. And that was an embarrassing experience. But uh, that was something that taught me to, you know, during that time period to stay a little bit longer. And then the next day I went in there and I hunted my way in. I still hunted my way into that spot and I ended up grunting in. I think it was either one or two bucks. It was at least one. And I didn't get a shot because it was kind of a thick clear cut that I was skirting the edge of, but I was able to, to have a, a pretty cool experience going in there. So that was just an example of, you know, kind of going in late during that time of year. Uh, to kind of move on to the next question about headlamps and, you know, should you use a white light, should you use a red light, green light, no light. And personally, I don't believe the color of the light affects deer. And Dr. Carl Miller, who studied deer his entire life, he was on a podcast. Man, I don't remember the exact number. I want to say 130 something. Uh, if you just search Dr. Carl Miller, Carl with a K on the podcast, you'll find him. It'll be the first one I did with him. I did another one uh, last year with him, but he doesn't believe that it does either uh, as far as the, the light color. Now, I like to use white light when I'm entering into the tree in the morning because I don't want to snap sticks and, and it's just quieter for me to enter if I can see a little bit as I'm going through. Now, where where I've found a pretty good argument where someone came back to me on this, because I've said this before, but someone came back to me and said, well, red and green are used by pilots for flying because they don't obstruct your night vision. So as your eyes adapt to the night, there you start you notice like if you you're sitting out in your tree and it starts to get dark like your your eyes kind of adjust a little bit and pull a little bit more light in and so th that's a that's a really good point now where where I don't think that matters as much as when you're going in, in the morning your eyes are already messed up you're in a house you're in a vehicle you got headlights like my eyes aren't really adjusted at that point so I don't think a white light matters for that when I'm going in, but I did start using that coming out. And personally, I like the green light over the red. I feel like it's brighter. I'm able to see a little bit more, but it doesn't obstruct that night vision. So as your eyes adjust, you're still able to, to take advantage of that and 
to be able to walk out. Now, uh, a story that, that I have from last season, uh, just talking about headlamps and walking in. So I was walking in about two hours early, uh, to my set in the morning and I had my, my sticks and my saddle and everything on my back and I'm heading in and I was about, I don't know, hundred yards from where I planned on setting up and I had a white headlamp on pretty bright going through there. I was trying to navigate, uh, through the woods and, and I walked past a bedded doe at 15 yards and she never moved. And I've had this happen more times than not. They just, I feel like they don't feel threatened at that time of the night. And especially if the wind's blowing in your face, but they just, I mean, she saw me. I was right there walking through. I thought I was quiet, but I probably wasn't as quiet as I thought I was. And, um, yeah, just walked right past her, went and set up in the tree. So again, that's just, uh, some of my experience and what I think of with these questions. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope it helped you out a little bit, make some decisions there. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that the specific headlamp that I use and I've used for quite a while is the black lamp. Black Diamond Storm, I believe it is. And uh, now they have rechargeable ones, which I think is really cool. Uh, I have the ones that take the four trip ways and I just put lithiums in there. They don't last extremely long. I feel like the battery dies faster than I would like. But at the same time, I, I do feel like uh, that headlamp has been super reliable and you can put um, a high mode on it if you really need it, if you're blood trailing or doing anything and it brightens up the woods pretty dang good. So I've really liked that, that headlamp, but always looking for other options. So if, if, if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to, you know, comment, uh, them on the podcast or, uh, or shoot me an email and always looking to, to try out new stuff and, and see how it works. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you found this helpful. If you like it, I'd really appreciate giving a rating and review wherever you listen to the podcast at. If it's on YouTube, uh, hit subscribe, comment. All that stuff helps out so much. Share it with your friends and uh, good luck this season. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.